So welcome to the interactive maps with Mapbox Studio and P5GS. Um, my name is Sarah and I work as a technology consultant at FabLab Hook. I have, a, I have a master's in social sciences in urban planning and I also have a bachelor in computer scientist, science. So I'm something in between like a, an urban planner and a computer scientist. And I've re just recently started this project with Aina. She's here today as well. We haven't talked about I'm, me speaking about this project, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's all right. It's uh, called Terra.town, and it's basically just, uh, for now, it's a blog where we post uh, things about data and geo-based geo da data that we think are interesting, and a kind of a place, a platform for us to push each other to learn new things. So go and check it out. Um, the program for today is that I'll walk you through the guide I've made. Um, we'll talk a bit about styling in Mapbox, uh, about how to use P5.js as a programming platform. And then I have two examples of how you can make interactive, interactive maps, one where the user can add data to a map. And uh, the example number two, it's like a point of interest. Uh, kind of map and in the end how you can share and show your project. So the guide I've made, I linked, I've linked to, to the guide on the in the chat here. I'm, I was trying to find the chat. Where is the chat? This is here. And this chat, chat is here, perfect. So you're very welcome to just, if you have any questions, just I'll try to keep an eye on the chat, but you're very welcome to just turn your microphone um, and ask me if you have any questions. So this is the guide. Um, uh, and it's basically, um, there's a lot of like references to other guides, so, I was helping these students making a uh, interactive map for citizen engagement. Uh, and we used Mapbox and P5GS and I learned a lot about it. And then I thought, oh, why not make a guide and a webinar about it? So I haven't worked with this that long, but I had some experience working with them. And then it just, I just find, found it natural to try to share the knowledge I got. So here is like where, where to find uh, some other references and some other guides to help you style, style for example, to style maps on, uh, using Mapbox and some how to learn P5GS, like which YouTube channels are good for that. P5GS is the JavaScript library that's very useful to, and, and, a, and a good place to start if you haven't programmed before. And then I have, I go through like what to have in mind to, when making a user input map. This is the first example. Um, and the second example will be the point of interest example. So this will be the, the second map that we'll look at today. Um, good. So this is the map, you can find it out there. Mm -hmm. Mapbox Studio, uh, it's a very powerful tool, I, I find it. Uh, it's not totally for free, but it has like a very generous free tier that it's all right for prototyping and small projects. And they have a lot of functions and functionalities into like the Mapbox platform, but, but we were exploring Mapbox Studio today to, cre so to create data and style maps. We use the static maps playground to, to make, um, uh, and a URL uh, to access the static map that we're going to do. And then for the example number two, we'll use the Mapbox GLJS library, which is a, a WebGL uh, library for Mapbox. So as I said before, P5 is a JavaScript library and it's the, peop the people behind it are have this, uh, they want to like to make coding accessible for everybody. 
and they have made this platform specially for one for artists, designers, and educators and beginners to um, to kind of learn how to code. And it's it, there's a lot of good learning material out there. I've also linked to there's a lot of links on the on the interactive maps uh, guide I've made on how to get started with P5GS. But it's also a, a, another thing that's good about it is that it runs in the browser, uh, and you can kind of preview what you do uh, along your coding. Good. Any questions so far? Mm. All right. So this is the example one user input. And that's what I want to uh, walk you through. So it's not like I've not I've not made the big deal about graphic design things like it's not the most beautiful map in the world. I focus more on on the functionality. Uh, so bear with me. It's not the beautiful, the be the most beautiful map I've seen, and you've probably seen more beautiful maps too. But this is a small static map where the user can add points for their favorite fishing spots in the south of Denmark, and then they can submit the data. And for now, the data is keep local as a CSV file on my computer, but I have linked to some, um, like it would make more sense to kind of, if you want to spread this out to some users to uh, send the data to a database, for example. Um, and that you could, for example, use Firebase, and I've linked to a guide on how to do that as well. But there's so many aspects when making this that I focused like on the beginning, like how to style the map, how to add some some input, and then if you want to 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 build upon this, you could add yours uh, the functionality of sending data to a database uh, for them to gather all the data and make some analysis out of it in a in a guess in a GIS program or something somewhere else. All right. The workflow will be we'll style a, a map in Mapbox Studio. We'll uh, uh, generate a, a URL with uh, with the playground static images playground from Mapbox Studio 2. We'll code some interactivity and then we'll talk about saving data. So how? So this is the part where I go and 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 go through this. You are welcome to follow along, but my thought was like, I'll show you how to do it, and you can do it afterwards because we're many people for me to kind of answer everybody's questions if you get stuck with with anything. So um, you're welcome to follow along, but I'll. Uh, my intention was just to to go through it, and then you can because I'm recording, you can go through it again and do it yourself. Do it by yourself. So workflow styling, we go to mapbox.com. And because I'm logged in already, I'll have the studio, uh, a link to a studio there. If you, you probably don't have it if you have, haven't logged in yet, but you can make an account, it's for free. Here in the mapbox studio, I'll go to styles, well, I'm in styles already. And then I'll make a new style. And I have like some basic templates that we can start working with um, here. Or you can go, they have also a gallery with more designish things, maps that have that some designers have worked with that you can also like uh, use. Um, but for now, I'm just starting with the, let me see. Maybe I'll just start with the basic. And then we can go, we can, yeah. So this is the Mapbox Studio styling platform. And sometimes this, this is good enough. We don't need to do anything with it. It's all right as it is, but sometimes we want to, to change some, some colors or what's shown on the map. 
uh, it depends on what you're working on, working on. And the Mapbox uh, platform here works, they have this components and the layers um, menu. And this components is a pretty new thing they just added and I think it's 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 good because it makes things a bit more simple. Um, like they've gathered all the administrative data, the boundaries data on this dashboard and the buildings in this and etc. And here like the colors of the of the map. But if you want to make, I'll just find Denmark here. If you want to make more specific changes for specific layers, you would, for example, I don't know, find, um, I would like all the big cities to have another color. So I can press, I'm just, I just, I'm just pressing in it. And, and I can see it has three, com three components and three layers. And it's probably the tag layer I want to change because I want this to have a new color. So you can see it opens the layer called settlement minor label. And if I want to change the color of this, I can override it. So I can say that, oh, override. So I'll, 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 I'll want my map to be more pinky uh, like this. And maybe the, um, the water, I want the water to be a, a bit more, more a lighter blue. And there's a lot of layers you can change. I'm not gonna change that much more, but I just wanted to show you that it's, it's what I think it's good about Mapbox, the styling functionality is that it's very easy to just go and, and do changes and style it according to whatever project you're doing. Good. All right, so I've styled my map. I think this is great. Um, what I need to do to, to kind of work with it uh, other places than this is to publish the map. So I, I go publish it and oh, I press share button. In the share button, I'll have the, um, I need to make my, my, my style public. And when it's public, I'll, I'll be able to access it through the style URL and using my access token. So when you make a, a, a Mapbox account, um, it generates a general access token, but you can, which means basically like a, a key that points to your account. Um, um, and you can make more access tokens for different projects. This is just a general for my account, but I could have more and kind of, sometimes you also need to, to make sure you secure your access tokens. I've also linked to a page that talks about that. But what I'm going to use, um, it's the style URL and the access token. And I'm going to use this in the playground. Um, in the playground, uh, the static images playground, which is this. What I can do here, it's because I'm already logged in, it's taking my access token from my account page. So this is basically the same than this. So I don't need to copy anything. But here I want to use my own public style. I can go here and copy my style and I can pass it into here and this will be my style. What this does is like, where, what you can do here, it's, uh, it's to find the, the part of the map that you want to, to save as an image put in your project. And what's smart about this is that if you change your, if you change your style later on here, um, so imagine you have coded like everything is very, you made it an iframe is on your website and it's working, but you're not 
happy with the styling. You can always go back to the styling, update the styling, and everything will be updated. So your image, because it's kind of pointing to, to uh, by requesting a URL, you can always change it, and we will change it, whatever you have the image. Um, so you can see here that when I move my map, this these parameters they move too. So this this last one is the zoom, for example, and this first one is, is the longitude and the latitude. So so this will be the URL that points to exactly which map, how much, and, and which part of the map I'm showing. I want this map to be higher than wider. So maybe this is too much. Let me see. So this is a part of Denmark that's very beautiful and there's a lot of good fishing spots. So that's why I chose that. So what I'm doing is just like, okay, try to figure out which part of the map I want, um, how much zoom it should have, and this, and this is what I want. An important thing for uh, for later is that your URL has the bounding boundaries of your map, not only the center. And this is because I'm going to use this to map after, in, in P5GS to map the pixels to latitude and longitude um, to kind of save the data of where the users are putting points. All right, so now I have the URL here. Any questions so far? Um, mm -hmm. Good. So we've done some styling. We've used make we've made an a URL in the static static images playground, which is this one. So now we're ready for P five. So I'll just go to the P five editor. Um, what this has is a sketch files. So all your files are here. A sketch is where you basically will program your program. It's a JavaScript part of this code. And this will be the preview, the canvas. Um, here it's the name. It's, it's good, like it generates a random name. So good just to write something that you will remember. Otherwise, I will not be able to know what able apparatus is. So this is the Mapbox static image workshop example. Maybe a bit, maybe this is a very big name, but but I'll, then I'll know what this is. Um, OK, so it, it has a setup function and a draw function already. If I preview this, it will basically be a 400 uh, by 400 uh, square with a background color of 220, which is gray. Um, so that's what we're seeing. But what we want to see here instead is our map. I would start, I, I, I wanted to show you the references page of P5.js, because this is, this is basically the workflow. It's OK, this is a new platform. I don't know anything about it. They probably have a reference page. Yes, they have. I want to load an image. OK, so they show me here how to load an image. Um, I need to make a variable. They have a preload function to load the image. This makes, sh this makes sure that the image is, the image is loaded before, uh, before your uh, page is, like the image is there when your page is loaded. And then you can call a function called image and then tell the, tell the program which image and where. And they explain this better in the description. So what I'm going to do, I don't have an image like a PNG file or a JPEG. I have a, uh, I have a, a URL, but that will do too. So I'll make a variable called map URL and here, 
output my URL. Good. So this is this is this is what points to my image. This is a variable instead of this is a variable that holds this string. What I then can do is what I what, what else? Okay, so now I need a function that loads the image called preload. Function preload. Preload. I'll I'll need a variable that holds my image. So this will be my map. And maybe this is for you for you guys that have that have programmed before. Some of it, some of it is like, okay, she's making a variable, it holds it, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but for you that, that haven't uh, programmed before, it's okay that you don't understand everything. Uh, and if you want to understand everything, you can go back to the links I've gave you about P5.js and programming. Uh, so my, my map, I want, I want my map variable to to hold my map URL image. Time perfect. Good. So now I have a variable called my map where my image is loaded into. So if I write image here, which is a function that's already a part of P5GS, you can see it's bold. This is not bold because this is something I created. This is something that exists in p5 a function that exists in p5 and here i'd like to to uh, this function basically just shows the image in the canvas and i'll make sure to just delete these because this will just keep on drawing a background on top of my image i'm not interested in that so this is my image I've made a variable that holds a, a, a URL request, and then I have a variable that holds my image. I load my image into that, and then I show it. If I would, uh, just to show you something, if I just, if I made this, well, this will change the API, but uh, this will change the request URL. But what I wanted to do is to maybe change the, watercolor to something more dark and then say publish make sure you say publish every time you you make a change and i'm not sure if this will yeah this will probably take a bit longer than 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 what i'm showing you now but but it will it will hopefully in in a not that much amount of time You'll, you'll see that the image there, it's, it's, it's uh, darker too. Because it's still the same style here. It's still the same style. Um, good. So this is basically how you load the image. What I want to do just because I find it better, it's to make sure that the canvas is same size of my window and that um, my image, my map is placed in the center of it. So I can use, I can use this function that makes that my X and Y window width divided by two. This is basically the, the center of my canvas. So this will then load like if if I make if I make this bigger and load it again, you can see that it will adjust the center of the image too. Good. So what where are we now? I'll I'll add some text as well, just the title and do I'll do the same, just try to write text under references. Say, okay, this is the way you write text. Uh, and I'll copy this. Uh, fishing spot. 
and I would like this to be in the center as well. And it's all right. So it's the, the zero point is here. These two variables here, these two param parameters are like the x and, x and y, where zero is here. So if I say the 50, it will probably be some, somewhere there. I make sure that my text align is also centered. And that my text is black. So fishing spots. You can you can style this text in many ways. You can put like a new new font into it, a stroke, or um, you can you can also make it like to to move and but but for now I'm just leaving it like that. This um, I'm just interested in changing the color. And I'll actually were, I'll actually would like to use the same color as um, as I'm using in the and the map. So I can actually go here to the color in my style, and then copy the color from my base from my style studio, and write it as a color here. So hashtag. Oh, it needs to be. So now it has the same color as this one. It doesn't look like that, but it's, it's apparently the same color. Uh, good. So now the interesting part, how to add points. There's a function called mouse pressed which is also a function that's a part of p5.js, which is an event that listens to the event, events of the mouse. So if the mouse is pressed, I want to write an ellipse in the position mouse x, and mouse y. So the position of where my map, where my mouse is, and then I'll give it a size 10 by 10. And I want this ellipse to be black. Well, black, black is zero. That's just a gray area thing. All right, so now I can, uh, now I can write, now, now I can draw uh, circles in my map. But this is not that interesting because it's only like dots in the map and I cannot, it's not, it's not data at all yet. It's only like just a drawing. Uh, a graphic uh, element uh, to my map. Um, so what to do? Um, what is smart to do is to, to make a class of points. Uh, this is like something a part of, like this is a class and objects are a way of programming called, called object-oriented programming. And I've also, there's also a link to how to understand this better in the guide. But it's, um, it's basically a way of storing the things that are similar. Um, so what I will do is I'll create a file called .js. Uh, and then I'm going to copy some code from my guide. So I don't want to everything. Oh, oh, so I have user input. So I'll have a class called dot here, which basically has a construction, meaning that every dot I make needs to have an X, a Y, a radius, and a color. And it will have a method called show as well. So for every time the mouse is pressed, I want to make a new dot that holds the position of it. And I want, it, I want to have uh, this stored as data because I want 
the data to uh, to be recorded so I can use it in some analysis afterwards. The way you do this is uh, make a dot, call me a dot, and remember it has a constructor, meaning meaning that we every time we make a dot, we need to have these parameters. We need to, to feed it with these parameters. An X and a Y will be my mouse X, my mouse Y. So the position of the mouse X and Y in the given point, in, in the given uh, moment that I press it, the mouse and the radius, radius will be 10 and the color will be 20, which is gray, dark gray. Um, and then if I say show, because I have I have a dot and because I have a method called show inside my class that makes an ellipse with this X and this Y and this radius, meaning the mouse X, the mouse Y, and the radius, it will show in the method. We, it, another thing that's important to remember when you make new files, it's to add it to your index file. It's called dot. All right, so uh, there's probably, yeah, it's not called though, it's called dot. Yeah, if, I don't know if you noticed, but I got an, an error here. And actually, if you read the error, you probably figured out what it, what's wrong with your code. So now I have, it's, it looks like the same, but it's it's actually uh, instance and instance objects of the class dot that I can uh, save in in something called an array. Uh, I'll call it dot, and this is the syntax for it. Because then I'll have an array is basically a list, and then I'll have all the dots I create, or all the dots the user creates to be stored in a list. And then I can export this list to locally to the computer as I'm doing now, or send it to a database or somewhere in the web. So you as a, I don't know, planner or whatever, can, can go there and collect all the data and use it for some analysis. So if you say, dot push that this is the way you can um, you put the new dot that you create every time the mouse is pressed into the array if i now if i now say print dots so print i want to to print in the console the console i want to print whatever is stored into dots you can see that Every time I make a dot, the array gets bigger. And if I open one, I can see, okay, there's actually, I'll make this bigger. There's actually a dot and position zero that has an X and a Y and a, and a radius. The second one will be the same, blah, 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 but just with different positions. Good. And you can just ask me, questions if you have any questions. Um, so I'll just add one more thing and then I'll talk about how, how to uh, save this as data that we can use as geographical data. I'll add a submit button. So how do buttons work in P5? You go and in the reference page of P5 and see, okay, how do they create buttons? They make a vertical button and they create a button. This is probably like what the button is called or what text is in the button, the position and which event to, which, which event to run when the mouse, when the button is pressed. All right, so if this is the way to do it, we'll do it. I'll create a, val a variable called button. 
And what else? Uh, index here. Oh. Button, new button. No. What was it? Create button. Okay, I'm going to copy. Uh, it's gonna. I want. I wanted to have submit return in the position of window width divided by two, and the y window height minus one hundred, which means there somewhere. And then I don't. I need to make. And, and a function that runs when the button is pressed and open. And that function will be a uh, call submit. It, it doesn't exist yet. That's probably that. Yeah, that's probably what's what my error is about here. So I'll just make a function called submit. And it's empty for now. So now I have a submit button, but it doesn't do anything. I'm still printing my dots. Good. Mm -hmm. An important part of making geo geo based data and and stuff with maps. It's like coordinates and projections. Um, because what I want to do now is to uh, transform the the coordinates I have now, which which basically are x and y pixels in a canvas, to latitude and longitude, which I can use later on on a GIS analysis program. Um, I'll go back to my guide. Uh, so what I do, what I've come up with, and what I've and this, what I understand of projections is, as long as you are in this web Mercado projection and in this small scale, you can actually just make a, a, a linear proportion, proportion, which means that you can, if you have the boundaries of your map in latitudes and longitudes and the, the pixels of the map as well, you can kind of transform one to the other by mapping. Uh, these values. Uh, but if you're working with, uh, let's say, if your map is made in Mapbox and you're going to use your data in some other projection, you will need to uh, to make uh, to apply a formula for it and and make and make the conversion. Uh, and uh, there's a JavaScript library that helps you with that. I'm not using it uh, here, but I've linked to it. It's called Project for JS. Or yeah, approach pro, for js uh, and it, 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 it seems pretty useful when you're having these issues. And, and here it's the link for it. Um, yeah, I'm just going to copy this. I'm just going to talk you through it. Um, So remember that we talked about that we wanted our URL to have the bounding boxes, the bounding box uh, coordinates mean, which means these four points, they're stored in here. So what, what I make in the beginning is to make a table to store my data. And then I use splits, which is a function that splits a string into pieces. In the end, I get the four the four coordinates. I also calculate the boundaries of the map image, and then I put and then I map like um, the boundaries from latitude longitude to x and y. And I do this here. So I hope you understand. Like maybe it's difficult to see in the code how it's done, but I hope you understand the, like the concept of it, and then you can always try to look at the code again. And what I'm doing 
right now it's to store it in a table and then I save the table as a CSV file locally on the computer. It doesn't, doesn't really make sense if this is something that you want users out there to, 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 to generate some data about. But, but the concept is here. So instead of saving the table, you will probably send the data to some database. You can, do, you can do that by using Firebase. And here's a YouTube video on how to do that. Um, so if I run it here and make three points, and oh, yeah, right now you can also make points outside of the map. You could write some code that makes sure that the user only makes uh, points inside the map, but it's not, it's not that important now. So if, if I open this in, uh, yeah, let me open it in text edit. It's just easier. I'm not sure if you can see it because I'm also only sharing. Uh, maybe I can put it here. Yeah. Can I put it here? No. Um, mm -hmm. Let me just switch the the views ones. Mm -hmm. So the data will look like this. Can you see it? So there's a latitude and a longitude with a lat. Basically my X and Y's coordinates are now latitudes and longitudes that I can then again feed into my, for example, my map box. So keep in mind, I have this file in my computer uh, and I'll find this again. Maybe I'll just share my desktop. It's better. Yeah. So if you go to your map box and I'll just make a new style, you can uh, make a new layer and upload some new data to it. Uh, so what's the name of it? It's called new CSV confirm. You can see it's being uploaded here to Mapbox Studio. Uh, and once uploading, I'll find that mark again. It switches to this to this view when you're uploading data for some reason. I don't. I'm not sure why. Um, so I've uploaded the data, now I need to select it here. And I remember it's called, if you can go there and see what's called, it generates like a name as well, new seven something. And so the visible features will be green and the not visible ones for certain reasons will uh, be, I don't know, pink. But we have three points. Uh, yeah, they're there. And you can see they have, they're exactly the same points as this here. Three points here and there. If I had many points, I will, I will, I will see them there. All right, okay. Um, where is my PowerPoint? So this is basically the example one. Um, what I haven't implemented that I would like to have, I didn't have the time for it, so I'm jumping around. Um, where is my map? It's here. It would be nice to have, for example, uh, some more info about what this is. It's a button that clears the input. It's not, there's, if the user is putting dots somewhere and it regrets, it could be good to have like a delete function somehow or just clear clear input clear the input function so we could add a new button and then uh, clear all the dots from our uh, canvas uh, the submit button would make sense to also just send data to a server all this is explained the code is also there it's explained with links to stuff that you can read more about in the guide 
Any questions to this first example? Because I don't have anything else to this example. No questions. Yeah, yeah, good. I think we should have like a, a 10 minute break. Uh, so yeah, stick your hat out of the window, catch some sun. <laughs> have a coffee and and we'll be back in 10 minutes so maybe i'll just say a three okay i'll be back at three good
Okay. So let's get started again. I'll share my screen once again. So hopefully you're seeing my screen. Uh, are you seeing this presentation? Oh, I can't see the chat. Yes. Yes, thank you. I'll try to figure out how to see the chat. Do -do -do. It's here. Yep. Good. So the second example uh, is, I'll just show what it is. Um, it's making a map based on WebGL, which means uh, uh, rendering graphics into the web, uh, which makes it possible to kind of navigate in this map. Um, so, so we'll go through how to do that and then how to add data uh, and interactivity to the data. Like, like I do, it's, this is a very simple example as well, but, but hopefully you'll get the, the point. There's, a, there's, there's not that much coding this time, because it's a bit more complex and I'll need more time to kind of go through all the aspects of the code. Um, but I'll go, I'll go through the workflow. Uh, I'll go through the workflow and, and then you can dig into the code later on if you want. Uh, yeah, so the workflow is, we, there's also the possibility of creating data in Mapbox Studio. So we'll do that. So we'll create like a root, a line, uh, and the dots on where we want the point of interest, is, interest to be. Uh, we'll add this data to a style and style it. Uh, and then uh, we'll uh, use uh, P5 to add some interactive elements to it. And here we're going to use mapper.js, which is not the best, thing in the world because it's a library that actually help us integrate uh, Mapbox GL into P5, but it hasn't been updated for three or four years, which means that uh, it's not fully functional as it, uh, it is documented, but, but it's the best I could find until now. You could, of course, also just um, go through the Mapbox GL uh, API and implemented it yourself, but I think that this MapGS has some good functionalities that we could use, and and the things that were not working because it was too outdated, I fixed. Uh, so in the guide, you can find a link to like the updated and fixed MapGS uh, library, and maybe maybe I'll write my library one day myself. But for now, this. This works and it works fine. And then we will use the data we create to to create it, to load the data, uh, the, the geographical data, the, the, the position data into our map uh, to, to, for example, in, in the example I've made to put an image in every point uh, we've created. And then I'll talk a bit about how to share your project as, for example, an iframe on a website. Show how. So how do you create data in Mapbox Studio? Let's go to Mapbox again. Studio. And now instead of just creating a new style, we'll start creating a new data set. Create a new data set, give it a name, root, one, no, let me just call it something else. Uh, is Tran Good. And so I'll go to Bungie Uh Try to find Bungie Strand. Here it is. And I want to make a route that starts here, goes all the way around. Uh, and add some points, add some points where to the places I know there's some stuff. It's not exactly, there's not exactly that much stuff out there, but let's just 
say it varies. So there's, you have the possibility of drawing a point, a line or a polygon, which is then converted to GeoJSON. So I'll make my route starts here and goes through this and there's a heap, boom, boom, boom. You can, do, you, can do, you can do this more detailed than I'm doing it not right now. You can also zoom in and make sure you kind of actually pick up the, the road that's out there. Yep, so now we have a line and I want to add it a property. I want to say this is the field, this is a root and the value is the, the strand root, I mean speech root. Yeah. I'll just call it that. Good. And I want to add some points, which are my points of interest. So let's say there's one here and this will have you kind of need to, to write some data into it to find it afterwards. So the field here will be the POE points of interest and the value would be, I don't know, I don't remember what's there exactly, but just say that's a dog area, area for dogs. I'll make a new one here and here there's another POE point of interest and here there is a link. And I'll add one more. Here, a field will again be point of interest and the value will be a cafe. So now I have a root with three points. You need to make sure that you save your data and that you export your data. So it, it's exported as a tile set so you can use it in Mapbox Studio and it's processing it here. Mm -hmm. You don't need to wait for it. It will work in the, in the background. Um, so now we're going to, create, we're going to create a new style. I'm using this one, monochrome in light colors. Going to find one plus three. Keep spelling it incorrectly, but it finds it anyway. Good. You can see here that the the, the data is is succeeded in exporting. This means that now I can actually add a new layer. I just press add new layer there, and then I have the option of Select selecting a source, and I don't remember what I what did I call it. It's tan, something with tan, tan one B map. Good. You can see there's a lot of points. This is because the line are. This is because we have a circle selected here, and the line I made had a lot of points. But I actually just, I just, I, I, I don't want the points. I want to start with the line. So I need to make sure that to tell Mapbox that what I want to see in this layer, it's the data that is of type line. Good, so now I have it here and then I can style it some. I'll leave it black. Maybe I'll give it, I'll make it a bit thicker. Yep, thicker, that's it. But I also want my points to to be added, but I need to add this as a new layer because now it's not a line, it's the points I want to show. Uh, and the way, you know, the way I, I make sure that the points I show are the points of interest and not the points of the line I made, it's by making a filter. So I can create a filter saying that if POE points of interest exists, oh, sorry, here, exists. If, if it exists, you can see that there's three points that are green and the others are pink. And this is because we can see the, the, the visible fit features will be green and the other ones will be pink. So if I go there and style it, um, I can also style it if I want to change the color of it to, I don't know, yellow. Um, 
Oh, I actually liked it black. Maybe, maybe, maybe more, maybe grayish. Yes, that's it. So now I have the, now I have my map uh, with a root that I draw made as, which is a graphical element, but it's also, I also have it as data and tree points as well. So if I publish this map, good, and just make sure it's public, as I told you before. Uh, I now have a style and access token. This is what I will need to, uh, to, to make a reference to this map in P5. Uh, what I also need to do, because I'm going to use the data. So imagine you had a, a map with much many more points. Uh, and you would like to add some inter interactivity to every every single one of them in P5. Like if it's only three, it's 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 easy enough to kind of figure it out which latitude, longitude they have and hard coded. Um, but if you have many, it's easier if you just have uh, the data, and and then get your program, your code to run through the data and and make the point on the latitude and longitude of the data you have. Um, good. So I'll need to export the data I have by going to data sets and download. Uh, and if I choose to open this as a text file in, as a te in text edit, you can see I got the GeoJSON data here. So it has the features. Uh, and then it has some features that are proies, and then it has one, I know there's only one called root. Good. It's it. apparently P5, the ask can read GeoJSON, but you can read JSON, and it's all right. It, you need to rename this file to JSON. Otherwise, you will not be able to upload the file to, to, to P5. And I also call that Oh, maybe I can do this here. I need to do, yeah, I need to do this in the finder. Um, so it asks me if I want to change the extensions and I do. Good. It's still the same file, it looks the same way. Just a JSON file. Another thing you need to take in, you know, have in mind uh, is that I haven't understood understood why, but apparently in GeoJSON you always write longitude before latitude, where you usually do the other way, way around. So this is something you need to have in mind when coding, uh, it's not to not to switch those two. So the first coordinate is always longitude, and the second is the latitude. Good. Da -da -da. So where am I now? So I've created some data. I've added the data to my style. And now I'll show you how to create a map uh, that has these uh, rendering things, like where you can uh, navigate through the map in P5. And then I'll show you how to uh, load data and put some interactivity to it. And no questions so far. I'll probably just create, let me just close some of this. Uh, Yes, so make a new program or a new sketch, new project, call it uh, pro example workshop. Let's go through the, so there's two things I want to show you. First, it's the Mapbox GLJS API. And if you go and read the references they have in the page, they'll they'll go show you like how to create how to start. What do you need? 
um, and this is this is if you want if you didn't want to use the MapAGS library and just want to code it yourself, uh, this is, will be the place to start. And this is also, of course, what the map MapAGS is making for us uh, behind uh, when we're using this library. It's basically a reference to to a reference to the to the JavaScript files, and then here how to create a file, how to create a map. Sorry. Um, so you will have need to you need to have, give it an access token, a container, a style, and, some, and a position. If we then go through map, go to mapags, mapags, and go to their API reference and walk into getting started. I think here it's better. A mapagl, mapagl. This is because this library can handle more stuff, not only Mapbox stuff. You will see here like a very simple example of how to use this. It will have a key. It will have a, a, a valuable that stores the options. The map needs to kind of initiate and then you can make an instance of uh, the map. And here in setup, you can then say, show the map as an overlay. Um, in the guide I've made, Todo, we have done, we've got, gone through this part one. Uh, I have gave, gave you a, gave you a link to the GitHub page where, oh, I want to open it. Another page here. So this is like the updated version of MapAGS, and it's not that much new that I've done. There was simply a, a, the reference to the to the Mapbox API JavaScript library was outdated, and then some styles, the newer styles, wouldn't load. So this is what I've changed, and then I've added a method. So it's not because it's broken, but but as it is, because it hasn't been updated, you can just point to their GitHub or to their page, to the MapAGS page. Uh, you will uh, you will need to to make a copy from from my GitHub. So I can do, 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 do go to file. Yeah, can I just download it? Well, I have it already on my computer, but. Uh, and let's say download somewhere here. Well, you'll figure out how to download this, so you can just copy it. Mm -hmm. And it handles, then again, it handles like lots of other services, not only Mapbox. Um, but you can copy it or download it and then add it to your file. Uh, create file, call it MapAGS, add the code to there. Make sure you add it also as a script to your index file. Script source mapags. Oh, source and script. Okay, big. So now I now I now I kind of tell my page that needs to include the mapags. Script. And this code here, what it does, I'll show you. It's in the sketch, this is where you usually program stuff, is that it creates the map. This is my old style. I still have, this is my access token. If you're doing your own, you're very welcome to use your own access token. But then I want to change the style here to the one I just made before with you. So it's not here anymore. Gonna need to go find it. Da -dum, da -dum. So this is it.
And I'll, I'll leave the latitude and the longitude because it's the same place. But if you would like to, to if, you, if you don't know where your map is or what, what you want to show when you load the, the page, uh, you can zoom into the place where you want the, the page to load and you can see it either here, this is the zoom, the latitude and the longitude, or you can go to settings and it will be there too. So this, uh, this, uh, this can be like, your the values you put into here, the latitude, the longitude, and the zoom. So if I load now, I'll load it with a different style because it just changed your mind there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Boom, boom. Yeah. Um, let me think. So there's three other things I want to go through. I'm not going to code this or copy. I'll just open my uh, example from before or that I've made in advance and go through it. So what do we need to think here in the sketch? So what I'm doing, this is the part of the, of, of of it that shows the, the map. But I, I would like to, for every point, to add a small icon, icon uh, and some text. And I actually have the position of the icon and the text stored as data. Uh, that's what I downloaded it before. Uh, and I call it uh, data. Um, yeah, this is, uh, I'll show you, I showed you this before, but this is, but this has like the, uh, it, it has a value for the pro and it has coordinates. So what, what I did here, it's as I did before, I made a class in the other example, like I made a class called POI and you usually make classes if you want to make uh, the same uh, thing like one again, uh, uh, more times than once. Uh, and here I want to make a POE for every point I have in my data. And what I want this POE to, 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 to have is, is to have a, lo a latitude and a longitude and X and a Y coordinate and a, a, a size, width and height and a, and a title. And it also has, I've made it, I've made three different methods that belong to this class. Uh, which are over, which means is the mouse over? And if it is, I'll show the text. Show, it shows the image of this. This is an image, this point, this point of interest kind of icon. And then I have an update position method. Um, and this is a, a very important part of this project because when I load the data from my, uh, the data I created in Mapbox, I have a longitude and a latitude and I convert that here. So I'm loading my data here. There's also a guide, uh, there's also a guide on how to load JSON and how to kind of um, um, uh, access different data you have. So the title and the position when I have the position, I want to convert that to X and Y coordinates on my canvas. Uh, and Mapa.js has a function that's very useful for that, where you all basically just give it a latitude and longitude and it calculates where is that on the canvas right now. Um, and then I store that to begin with uh, for the the first uh, tile I see here. But if I move this tile, I also need my, uh, the longitude and the latitude will be the same, but my X and Y will change. And I need this position to be updated for every time. Um, so for every point I create, I store the latitude and the longitude to later on be able to update the X and Y position. Uh, yeah, 
So this is this is a, this is basically like the, the the more the more the most complex part of this program, um, but a very important one if you want to use that, if you want to make something like this. Uh, there's there's other there's other methods that you can use here. You can either go through um, through the APU reference here from MAPA, but you can also see how which which other methods does the Mapbox API has. For example, I've added I told you that I added one to the MAPA GS library called I don't know if I told you, but I had I have added one called Jump to, um, which is. Uh, I think it's here, research. Yeah, map jump two, which is um, which is a function that exists in the in the in the Mapbox GL JavaScript library that 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 basically goes to the a position or a tile you want you'd have defined. If you kind of get get lost in the map somewhere, we could have a button here. Uh, we can add a button here saying find one bush time again, and then it will go and jump to the to the part of the map you want to show. And and like this, there's there's others methods you could implement if you want. Um, yeah, so this is the, the map box AP reference. Uh, good. What do I else want to show you? Is there anything else here important? No. Good. So now we have made the map we want and it's ready. Uh, I just want to show you how to share it from here. So if you go into file share, you will have some different options. The first one, it's uh, it generates an iframe, um, an iframe uh, that you can uh, put into iframe. It's like an HTML element that you can put in in in, in another website. For example, uh, example. I just have a small example here. Uh, yeah, I'll just delete this and this. And, uh, and I'll put my iframe into it. So here you have it. You can, if you had a website or you are a municipality or something else and you want to put this in a page you already have, you just can, like you simply can uh, embed it as an iframe. It's a very nice functionality or um, or you can use it as, as a present mode as it is like this. This is a web page by itself. Um, yeah. What else? Uh, so this is like how to share. Yeah, this is this is basically it. There's only one thing more that I've added. Well, I've just added a, a, a link to how to secure your data and map. I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with it, but if I, let me find, let me show you this in present mode. Um, or where is it? This one. I'll share, present. If you go into your web tools here, you can, um, you can actually see like what's the code behind all this. Uh, and you can you will see that your access token will be available for everybody to see. Um, let me see if I can find it. Uh, style body, doo -doo -doo, where, there it is. My main script. Yeah, here it is. So my access token is actually there for everybody to use. 
everybody can go there and just use my access token. And since Mapbox is not for free, or you have you're having a project where you don't want anybody to just push data into your to your account or something else, you need you probably need to just secure this stuff. Or if you have other reasons to secure your data, um, there's Mapbox has a has a yeah has a post here on how what what to have in mind and what to do. Uh, for securing your stuff. This can also be useful for some of your projects. Uh, yeah, so so it's that's actually what I would like to show you for this time. And it's I know there was a lot of information and the idea about the workshop was also just to go through the guide and then let you dig in and go through the guide on your tempo afterwards. But now I've listen I've heard about it once and it'll probably be easier to understand what's in the guide and, and how to find the different functionalities. And if you're not very familiar with code, you can always go through the, the P5.js um, P5 uh, uh, guides and tutorials uh, to get more familiar with it. But, but here you, you, you have like a starting point. And I hope it's useful for, for useful for your projects. But maybe there's there's half an hour yet. I, I'm very open for questions. If anybody has one has questions, otherwise you can always reach me by mail. Uh, there, my mail is also in the guide, or you can find it online. No questions. But good. I wish you luck, and and you're very welcome to to ask questions afterwards. Bye.